So here we have the catenary, the shape of a hanging chain. This was uh, a problem studied in depth in the late 17th century, with the early uh, one of the earliest applications of the calculus to uh, determine and, and describe this curve. Here is a figure from Leibniz's uh, article on this from 1691. So he has drawn here the linea catenaria vel funicularis, the line of the chain or uh, rope. And uh, he has even drawn the little links, you know, so you can see it very clearly there. And then, so uh, from a modern point of view, we would describe this curve using the equation written on the right over here. So you can express the catenary in terms of exponential functions. So, b however, Leibniz does not publish this equation in his paper, nor does anybody else at this time. Uh, he doesn't write the equation. Nevertheless, he understands this relation very well. Although he doesn't express it as an equation, he nevertheless understands its implications. He understands the catenary very well, can infer all kinds of properties that we would do with this equation. In fact, he has even drawn in the figure, you can see linea logarithmica, he calls it, in his figure here, which is really what we would call an exponential function. You know, exponential logarithm, whatever, it's the same thing, basically. You just flip the uh, flip the axis around and it's you have the same graph. So that's the linear logarithmic uh, showing the exponential function. So Leibniz is fully aware of this uh, relation. Nevertheless, uh, what Leibniz concludes from this f fact that the catenary is related to exponential functions is not that the the right way to describe the catenary is by means of an equation like this. I found the, the answer, the formula, so to speak, for the catenary. That's not what he uh, concludes. Rather, he goes the opposite direction. He says the fact that the catenary is related to exponential functions means that I can use the catenary to determine logarithms. So it's kind of backwards versus the modern point of view. Here, let me show you how he does this. Uh, so you obtain a chain. You can use a, a necklace, for example. You can go buy a necklace in some cheap store. I got mine for three ninety five here. So uh, that's uh, cheap for for such a valuable mathematical tool. And then you have to hang the your necklace from two points. So if you don't want to hammer nails into the wall specifically for this experiment, it's good to use one of these cardboard uh, boxes you can get in for free at the supermarket there. So uh, you nail your your uh, chain onto the onto this surface then. And there you have the uh, catenary. Now we're going to perform certain measurements on this figure. And that is the, uh, uh, you know, you have your measuring tape ready there. So let me show you the steps that you carry out. Here is the, the catenary then. I first uh, connect the, uh, the two endpoints there and I draw the, the vertical to the middle. It's going to be my y-axis of the coordinate system that I'm about to draw. Then I uh, put a third nail through the middle, uh, through the lowest point of the catenary. So I already have two nails for the endpoints, and now I put my third nail through the bottom there. And then I extend one half of the catenary in a horizontal line. So this horizontal catenary is equal in length to the half that I uh, released and placed in horizontal position instead. Okay, and then I connect that point that I obtained this way up to the midpoint, find the uh, the midpoint of that segment, and draw the uh, drop the perpendicular there from that point, Th and then I find intersection here with the y-axis, and through that point I draw this horizontal line, which is going to be my x-axis. And uh, now in the coordinate system that I have here determined, the y-axis and the x-axis I have uh, constructed in this fashion. Uh, in that coordinate system, the catenary now has the equation, the, the, the very simplest equation for a catenary, which is written over here, the, the simple combination of exponential functions. So you use the unit of measurement is going to be the this distance that I have marked with one here. So uh, that uh, is quite a remarkable construction that Lyman offers to, to determine, to find this thing. And now once that is in place, the rest then is that from there it's not difficult to find the logarithm of a given value. Let's say I want the logarithm of some value y, like for instance 2 or 3 or something like that. Then 
I first compute, do some simple arithmetic to determine this value, the y plus 1 over y divided by 2. I can just compute with straightforward uh, uh, computation, at the I and then I locate that point on the y-axis corresponding to that value. And then I go to the catenary and find the corresponding point in the catenary corresponding to that y-value. And I locate the corresponding x-value, which is in fact the logarithm that I seek. Now I have determined the logarithm. If I want log 2, log 3, so I, I just have to measure the x coordinate of a given point on the uh, on the catenary. So in this way, I can find logarithm of any value. In fact, Leibniz himself says, you know, suppose you are maybe, for example, traveling, and uh, you need your you have a table of logarithms with you, obviously, because you need logarithms are very important for navigation because w there are complicated calculations involved in for any navigational problems, so maybe you lost your table of logarithms in a storm or something like that. Uh, so then you have to, uh, in an emergency, then you can turn to a piece of chain and hang it to the wall of your cabin in your navigator's uh, cabin in the ship there, and then perform these measurements, and you could determine logarithms nevertheless, despite having lost your table. So, so this would be. Uh, Leibniz uh, mentions this possibility, so th that is certainly very different from uh, how we look at uh, catenaries today. From a modern point of view, we would say something like this: that oh, I I used the uh, the equation comes first. You know, you have the equation and you use that to explain the catenary, so to speak. Yes. So the the, the equation uh, yeah, calculus is about equations and then you can talk about catenaries and things. That's an application of the calculus. You start with the equations and later you can apply it uh, to some problem at the end of the chapter, you know, oh, it's a little extra, you can solve the catenary. But basically it's about equation. But to Leibniz, though, he looked at it backwards. He said, it's not the equations that explain the curve, it's the curve that explains the equations. And isn't he right? I mean, uh, what do these equations mean anyway? E to the x, what is this? E, what's that mean? You, it's some letter you made up and then you wrote an x up there uh, a little bit higher than the e and so on. What, what, those are just symbols that uh, you invent a rather sophisticated abstraction somehow. In and of themselves, these symbols do not really have much meaning. On the other hand, a catenary, now that's something concrete. That's something you can see before your very own eyes. It's very tangible. You can see it, you can touch it, you can measure, you can show it to somebody who knows nothing about mathematics, you would just say, there it is, look, you can't, you can't argue with this, it's right before your eyes, you know? It's a very concrete thing. So, doesn't it make sense that you start with this concrete, tangible thing and you go build your way up to sophisticated abstractions like exponential functions? Uh, these kinds of symbolic expressions are given meaning through these concrete uh, measurements that you carry out in the real world. Uh, it makes some sense, I think, this, this perspective. Furthermore, it goes rather well with what we already said uh, in even the previous uh, discussion that uh, in, the, in the Euclidean tradition and so on, we always make everything. We make, we have a ruler and a compass and we draw the figure, build it up, make, show it, uh, draw it in the sand and, and show to us what you're talking about. And that's the way to do mathematics. Uh, that's the way what, what has meant to do mathematics for thousands of years at this point in the 17th century. So certainly you were uh, with using the catenary then, you're sort of joining that tradition a little bit. It, it just as Euclid had his ruler and his compasses uh, to draw lines of circles, we have a piece of chain to make a catenary, which can be used in a similar kind of fashion. So that's, uh, we're joining a, a, a proud tradition. Whereas, on the, uh, on the other column, the equations, uh, what, you know, they have no continuity with that tradition. They don't uh, ha look anything like Euclidean mathematics. There's no, uh, you know, just, just, just I if you were to say in the 17th century, uh, you know, I'm just going to do, mathematics is going to be about symbols now, and uh, it's going to be about equations, formulas, that is all I'm going to do. I'm just going to play around with formulas. People would say, uh, wait a minute, but, uh, you know, is that, does that make any sense? Is Can it even be called mathematics? Aren't you uh, effectively giving up on mathematics altogether if that's what if you're turning to just playing around with symbols? Mathematics has always meant 
construction. It's always meant you make the thing concretely. And if you now start saying, no, mathematics is now all about symbols, maybe you're not even, couldn't even call yourself a mathematician because you're doing something completely different from what mathematicians had always been doing for thousands of years. And since mathematics had always been so successful, you know, who are you to say that you're going to discard that tradition and do something completely new, just playing around with with uh, symbols, which is uh, you know, an entirely new definition of mathematics. Why would you, you know, believe that that would be uh, useful or successful? So it's food for thought. Maybe in the 17th century people did it uh, the, the, the natural way and only in modern times have we turn the thing and put the uh, cart before the horse.